we've just seen Man City have arguably the best season in Premier League history. They've had a striker who just broken the all-time scoring record. They've won their first treble, European treble, that they've ever won in the club's history. And it just seemed like it was going up and up for Man City. But with a few transfers not happening this summer and also some players that are pretty key to the squad leaving, I just wanted to explore if Man City have actually got worse this summer going into the new season. So let's get into it. So to start with, the key departures for Man City this summer have been Ilkay Gundogan going to Barcelona on a free transfer and Rio Mahrez going to Al Ahly in the Saudi Pro League for, I believe it's about 20 to 25 million. So with Mahrez, it's a bit of a squad player. He is one of the best wingers I've ever seen in the Premier League and he could pretty much start for most teams in Europe, I'd say. But City have really used him you know, as a bit of a backup to Bernardo Silva who or ever really played in that position. But I think the main key departure is Gundogan because he's been the captain over the last few years. And if you look at it recently, he basically won them that FA Cup final. Obviously, those other players involved, John Stones had a great game. But he got those two vital goals for them against Man United. So it's taken away one of these big game players which was such experience because you can replace him with as they have done, another Premier League midfielder. But Gundogan is arguably one of the best midfielders of his generation in the Premier League. So you're taking that out of the squad plus your captain, it surely it's only, you know, a bad thing, I'd say. But obviously, we'll have to see how, because they brought in Mateo Kovacic from Chelsea for about £25 million, who is another experienced, good Premier League footballer, I think he could get to most sides in the league, but he's just not Gundogan because Gundogan can offer that maybe sitting back just in front of Rodri or he can be in that false nine, say if Haaland was having a good game and they need to put someone there and he can add you know, 10 to 15 goals a season, maybe 10 assists. And I think those things just go so under the radar because he might not be the flashiest of players sometimes, but he just gets in the box, he gets those you know, he gets those finishes, getting those 10, 15 goals a season. And I just think they're so vital towards Man City. So it'll be interesting to see what they do without them this season. But then you go to their arrivals, and this is where I think the problem could be for Man City, because maybe to say that they don't need too many players, because they've probably got the deepest squad in Europe. They've probably got the best squad in Europe. So it could be argued, I think, if you compared it to other teams, they'd be crying out for a squad like Man City and they wouldn't be bothered if they did make signings. But I think when Man City are trying to get, you know, they're always challenging for the title, they're always challenging for Europe and the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup, they need to have this constant squad of, you know, players in their prime, basically. And the only player they have brought in, like I said, is Kovacic, who is a good player and he, I'm sure he'll fit into their system well. He's played at Real Madrid, in at Milan, Chelsea... I started for all of them, so maybe other than Real Madrid. But he is a quality player, but like I say, he's not Gundogan. And when you look at it, they're still trying to get that Guavardio deal over the line from Leipzig. I think they probably will because I think just, the money talks in this situation, doesn't it, really? And eventually Man City will just go, here, here's the 90 million that you're after. And I think they've already agreed personal terms, so I don't think that'll be an issue. So then they add to the defence, but... I think it's just the potential maybe upset in the squad and also the potential departure that's still to come because constantly you're hearing about Kyle Walker going to Bayern Munich or wherever, which will be a massive miss. You've got João Cancelo, who I know missed the treble winning season last year. But again, I mean, he's gone from one of the best players, you know, best attackers, I wouldn't call him one of the best defenders, I know he plays there, but maybe the best left wing-backs, kind of left centre mid, in the world at one point. He doesn't just lose that overnight. And I know Pep has this thing with confrontation and he's, you know, he had it with Ibrahimovic at Barcelona and it's just a case of get them out if they're not bringing harmony to the squad, which I do admire in a way. But it's a case that if you're losing, continuing to lose these players and you're not replacing them, surely it has to be an issue. And I think not to skate over him as well, Riyad Mahrez is a massive miss for them because although he played a lesser part role last season he is still one of the best wingers in Europe and he just offers that if you are trying to break a team down 
is there a better player than Mar is in the league on his day? I mean, obviously you'll throw maybe a Salah or a Saka or a, you know, a Foden or a Grealish, whoever. But I think Mar is his touch is maybe the best I've ever seen in the league. He can take on a player. He doesn't need much pace to work in. So it goes, you know, are you going to miss that? Because I know Bernardo Silva is also one of the best in the world at doing that. But he can't play 60 games in the season, can he? He can't play in all the Champions League games, all the Premier League games, and all the Cup games. I know they'll probably rotate with you know, Cole Palmer, or I think there are a few more uh, talks for some more young players. But with their first team players, it's essentially Bernardo Silva and then maybe Cole Palmer. But I think Cole Palmer's gone on loan, hasn't he? I might be mistaken. I think he's gone to Germany. So I think their depth on the right-hand side is lacking a lot. If you tell me they're going to stick Foden there, I know he's not a left, uh, right-sided left player, but maybe. But then that goes into my next point. Phil Foden is going to be one of Man City's just enigmas that I just... It's going to be interesting to see over the next few years because he's coming into... I think he's about 21, 22, so he's still so young, isn't he? But... If he if he started week in, week out for any team, he'd be classed as one of the best in the world, in my opinion. I think he's that good of a player. I think he's that good at just taking people on, getting in the box. He adds goals to his game. And I think when him and Haaland, even though Man City weren't getting all the results at the time, when him and Haaland had that little thing going, I mean, you saw them against Man United at the Etihad, and he just looked world-class, didn't he? But if he's playing Grealish, which obviously Grealish deserves to play because he was so good last season, where does... You know, Phil Foden fit in that side and could that cause upset at one point because it only takes Foden to go I'm far too good to be sitting on the bench 30% of the time and the money can only do so far he can probably get the money at PSG, Real Madrid even Man United are, I know he'd never go to United but he could Arsenal, Chelsea any of these teams would love to have Foden and I just can't see him sitting on the bench because then it hinders his England chances it hinders just his individual success because he's tipped to win a Ballon d'Or one day and I think he has the ability to do it but he's not going to win it if he's playing half the games that he can do so I think the squad harmony could be an issue and I know Pep recently has been quite good with that as, we, as we've talked about last season he just got rid of Cancelo as soon as you know as soon as he was causing a bit of havoc and you you see that as like he's getting rid of one of his best players, quite you know ruthless. So it's fair play to him. But I'd just be interested to see the way he manages Foden because don't get me wrong. In the past we've gone why why didn't Foden go out on loan? Why didn't he go to a smaller club? And then Pep obviously had a plan and then he burst onto the scene. Which fair play, I think everyone was wrong about that situation. But I think it only is a matter of time before, in my opinion, I compare it to a uh, Emil Smith Rowe at Arsenal. Regardless of injuries, he has the ability to play for maybe not the top two or three clubs, but the rest I think he could probably start for. But eventually he's going to look at that squad and go, I can't get into that because they've got Declan Rice, they've got Havertz, they've got Saka, they've got Martinelli, and I just can't feature in that squad. So surely he has to get game time. Because if not, he's just basically going to piss his career away, isn't he? So I think Foden could be a big issue for Man City next season. This is just to pose the question, though, because... Me personally, I do think Man City will probably win the league again, which, you know, is boring, but they're just so good at this point. I've heard they're interested in Rafinha from Barcelona, you know, ex-Leeds player. I've heard they're interested in Jeremy Doku from, um, blanking on the team, it's somewhere in France, isn't it? But, you know, he showed what he could do for Belgium, I think it was in the Euros a few years back now, and he's rapid as anything. I think Pep could get his hands on him, you know, because Liverpool, we've been interested in him for a while now. So... I do think there are so many things that could go wrong for Man City, but you're hard to bet against Pep nowadays. I'll just be interested to see how he does manage Foden because he just he needs game time. And I hope I'm wrong because even though I would want a bit more competition, I want Foden to do well because he's an England player. And if he can burst on, not burst onto the scene, but if he can get a lot of game time, maybe start, maybe even start next to De Bruyne instead of Kovacic and Kovacic might come off the bench and he just keeps on progressing and turns into that world class player that he basically is borderlining already then fantastic I'm just interested to see 
then you know, is, is Haaland going to repeat the season that he had? I think yes. I think I don't think. I think he missed a lot of chances that he could have buried, which could have put him to forty plus goals. And obviously, De Bruyne, in my opinion, he just could be the best midfielder I've ever seen. Big statement, but maybe in my life. I think he's that good. I've never seen anyone like him. So he's just going to always keep the steady supply of chances to uh, Haaland. Is he going to bring Alvarez more into the team? I know he got quite a bit of game time last season, but it was mainly off the bench or in cup matches. Is he going to maybe put two up front? I think these are all questions that I'm sure a lot of City fans will be wondering at the moment. Because I know a lot's in the air with Guvario. I know with Kyle Walker, because does that mean they have to bring a right back in? Rico Lewis looked sharp last season, but again, you look at the time he was playing, Man City weren't as dominant as they were when Kyle Walker was back in the team. So, yeah, I guess we'll have to see for next season, because Man City are that good, they could probably do it again. I don't think they'll win the Champions League again, I just think you look at these teams, even Real Madrid when they were winning three Champions Leagues on the road, domestically they weren't doing it, so I think eventually a focus will have to be put on one or the other, because... It's especially losing players like Gundogan and Mares, the depth will be an issue you know, with those less experienced players. But yeah, thanks for watching this. It's just been a ramble. Uh, just interesting generic football, not just Liverpool. You know, I'm interested in everything. Kind of, you know, if you want to leave a comment, just yeah, get in touch and uh, we can speak about it. If you think Man City might be good next season, I'm sure they will be. If you think there's anything I've missed, then let me know. Uh, if you can like and subscribe. That'll be great, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.